His family was well-to-do, and as a young man not yet baptized, he was sent to Alexandria to study grammar and rhetoric. From Alexandria, he moved to Beirut to study Roman law. Here, Severus came under the influence of Christian students and began to study the works of fathers like Basil of Caesarea and Gregory of Nazianzus. Later, he was baptized at the shrine of Leontius of Tripoli, and after his baptism became increasingly ascetic, spending much of his time in church. In the divine liturgy of the Serene Orthodox tradition, Severus of Antioch is described as Togo de Suryoyo, how fumo molilo, why amudo, malfono do culo ito chadisto da loho, which translates the crown of the Syrians, that eloquent mouth and pillar and doctor of the Holy Church of God. As Patriarch of Antioch from 512 to 518, Severus was Togo de Suryoyo. His family was well-to-do, and as a young man not yet baptized, he was sent to Alexandria to study grammar and rhetoric. From Alexandria, he moved to Beirut to study Roman law. Here, Severus came under the influence of Christian students and began to study the works of fathers like Basil of Caesarea and Gregory of Nazianzus. Later, he was baptized at the shrine of Leontius of Tripoli, and after his baptism became increasingly ascetic, spending much of his time in church. In the divine liturgy of the Serene Orthodox tradition, Severus of Antioch is described as Togo de Suryoyo, how fumo molilo, why amudo, malfono, the culo ito chadisto da loho, which translates the crown of the Syrians, that eloquent mouth, and pillar and doctor of the Holy Church of God. As Patriarch of Antioch from 512 to 518, Severus was Togo de Suryoyo, the crown of the Syrians. He was Fumo Melilo, that eloquent mouth, one of the greatest orators and homilists of the early church. He was Amudo, the pillar, who gave spiritual direction to the faithful through the hymns he wrote for the church. And finally, he was Malfono, the Kulo Itho Chadishto Daloho, the teacher and doctor of the Holy Church of God through the instruction he provided through his liturgical writings. Severus' spirituality was modeled on the ascetic traditions. His homilies and hymns show that the purity of the church depended upon its hierarchy through which the knowledge necessary for human perfection, theosis, was mediated. Severus' teaching comes across as being of paramount importance whether it was carried out through the medium of dogmatic or polemic treatises, homilies, letters, hymns and liturgical works. There is evidence that he preached at least one catechetical homily per year. His letters attest to the fact that he was involved at all levels of society in spiritual direction on a one-to-one -one basis with groups, although here there is some overlap with teaching, administration, and his mission activities. Severus is known to have counseled bishops, archimandrites, male and female, monastics, male and female, clergy, non-Chalcedonian communities, and individual laypeople, high secular officials, patrician women, and emperors. Severus emphasized the preservation of orthodoxy by selecting the right bishops and clergy and having them ordained in a canonical manner. Missionary activities were a part of Severus' pastoral care and he fights against paganism. The patriarch condemns in his homilies, for example, the attendance of Christians at the pagan spectacles at Daphne and the horse races, the theatres and local Olympic games in Antioch. 
He is so concerned about the expansion and preservation of non-Chalcedonian orthodoxy. However, his concern with the maintenance of orthodoxy is implicit in every aspect of the pastoral care which he exercises. Severus of Antioch is known for his defense of Cyril of Alexandria's one incarnate nature of God the Word in the Christological debates of the 5th century. For Severus, Mary the Theosokos brought forth the one Christ who is at once perfect God and perfect man, the same being consubstantial with the Father in Godhead and consubstantial with us in manhood. Severus says, this is the apostolic faith, the orthodox faith and the faith of the fathers. Having this wonderful treasure, let us preserve it, let us keep it and let us also use it in such a way that this treasure becomes the victory of Christ in us and in his church. The feast of St. Severus is commemorated on the 8th of February and on the Thursday following the fast of Nineveh. The small presentation hopes to write a new icon of Severus of Antioch as the patriarch, homilist, hymnographer and liturgist who still boasts the largest and most varied collection of surviving writings of any Eastern bishop in the 6th century, non-Chalcedonian or Chalcedonian. May the prayers of St. Severus of Antioch be a stronghold and refuge to each and every one of us.